So they went back. What they don't say is, though, I would have been producing four times as much. And I took us from third into first place by a lot. But we have more liquid gold under our feet than any other country in the world, including Saudi Arabia. <laughs> So dominant in energy, we would have, you know, we were, uh, we were, we didn't need any energy from anybody. We didn't have to protect any other countries in order to get their oil, which we've done for many years in the Middle East. We were energy independent. It sounds so beautiful to say it. We're energy independent. We were soon going to be energy dominant, and we would have been now having so much money coming out of the energy. Where we just have the best. We have Bagram in Alaska. They say it might be as big, might be bigger than all of Saudi Arabia. I got it approved. Ronald Reagan couldn't do it. Nobody could do it. I got it done. In their first week, they terminated it. Uh, check that one out. Bob Rome. Check that one out. On, it, it's, it's, th no, think about this. Between Bagram, between you go uh, to uh, Anwar, you, you take a look at the kind of things that we've given up uh, we should be, we should have that air base, we should have that oil, we should have, we would have had a whole different country. But to give up Anwar, to give up uh, the, the biggest air base, military air base in the world, and they left it in the dark of night with the lights on, and they did leave the dogs behind. There are a lot of people, they say, what about the dogs? They left the dogs behind. But we would have been, we would have been, we would have been a much different country right now. But we're going to get it back, and I promise you, we're going to get it back with guys like this. Because this is the world's longest answer to an otherwise simple question. But the difference is, I give an answer that's productive as opposed to an answer that is not very productive, right? Like in the debate. But just to just to end this, uh, we are going to, for Michigan, because we want to be a little bit Michigan-centric. Uh, you used to be the capital of the world in cars. Today, you're an afterthought in cars. And I don't know the head of your union. I've never met the gentleman, Sean. I've never met him. But what he's done to your union and what he's done by agreeing to allow this country to say we're going all electric, which at some point they're going to end up taking back that mandate because that mandate is insane. They want to go all electric basically by 2030. And for him, think of this, for him to do that, you know, just real fast, you're right now at 25% of where you used to be and heading south because the electric cars are all going to be made in China and Mexico, but they're all going to be made basically in China. We are going to bring so many auto plants into our country. You're going to be as big or bigger than you were 50 years ago. So we do these rallies, they're massive rallies. Everybody loves, everybody saves till the end, by the way. You know, when she said that, well, your rallies, people leave. Honestly, nobody does. And if I saw them leaving, I'd say, and ladies and gentlemen, make America great again, and I'd get the hell out, okay? Because I don't want people leaving. But I, I do have to say, so I give these long, sometimes very complex sentences and paragraphs, but they all come together. I do it a lot. I do it with... Uh, Raising Cain, that story. I do it with the uh, story of the catapults or the aircraft carriers. I do it with a lot of different stories. When I mention Dr. Hannibal Lecter, I'm using that as an example of people that are coming in from Silence of the Lambs. I use it, they say, it's terrible. 
So they say, so I'll give this long, complex area. For instance, uh, I talked about a lot of different territory. The bottom line is I said the most important thing. We're going to bring more plants into your state and this country to make automobiles. We're going to be bigger than before. But the good news is, and there's a lot of them back there. You know, for a town hall, this is not a big but the fake news likes to say, the fake news likes to say, oh, he was rambling. No, no, that's not rambling. That's genius when you can connect the dots. Yeah. So, if you couldn't connect the dots, you got a problem. But every dot was connected, and many stories were told in that little paragraph. But there is something that they say that. The other thing I say is this. We had 107,000 people show up in New Jersey. We had 68,000 people show up in Alabama. We had 79 or 81,000 in South Carolina. And they've never said, I'm a great speaker. And I said, am I a great speaker? They said, oh no, he rambles. What the hell are all you people showing up for if I ramble? You don't want to show up for a ramble. to fight for the American worker than you, to bring back jobs and manufacturing to this country. Tonight, there's obviously a lot of people that really care about the auto industry here. And tonight, we have a question from one of the auto workers, Isaiah, here in the audience that would like to ask a question. Sure. What is Isaiah? Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll build a brand new beast. We're going to build a beast right here. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank Mr. you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. President, for having us here tonight. Uh, I just want to let you know that I've attended one of your rallies. I did not leave early, and I did not fall asleep. Just want to let you know I did not go. I did not go. I, I didn't see anybody else doing it either, sir. Um, my name is Isaiah, I'm a third generation UAW worker, working hard to build trucks here in America. Yes, yes. Get ready, you're going to be doing plenty of it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I work for Ford, and you actually came and visited the plant that I work at. You did. And my question to you, sir, is what do you see as the major threats to the future of Michigan manufacturing auto working jobs, and what will you do to eliminate those threats, sir? Okay, so I'll get into another little bit of a long answer because when you say major threat, to me we have one really major threat that's called nuclear weapons. We call we have other countries that are hostile to us. They don't have to be hostile to us. I always say, if you have a smart president, you'll never have a problem with China, Russia, or any of them. Okay. I got along great with Putin. I got along great with uh, President Xi. I got along great with Kim Jong-un of North Korea. Everybody said, oh, you can't get along with him. He liked me. I got along great with him, and he has a lot of nuclear force. But you essentially have five countries, and you're going to have more. Whether you like it or not, you're going to have more. It's the single biggest threat to the world, not only Michigan, to the world. And uh, you're not going to care so much about making cars if that stuff starts happening. And we have people that are not good at negotiation. The war should have never happened. Uh, President Biden, I want to be nice. Yeah, he was so nice to me yesterday, but you know, in one way, I, I sort of wish I, the call wasn't made because I do feel that he's so, so nice. I'm so sorry about what happened and all that. But I have to lay it out. We have very important, and the same with Kamala today. She could not have been nicer. But the fact is, the fact is, we have to have people that are respected by the opponent, to buy the other side, by other countries that have this. Even Pakistan has nuclear weapons. We have, we have countries, India has a lot of nuclear force. We have countries that have tremendous nuclear power. And when I hear these people talking about global warming, that's the global warming you have to worry about. Not that the ocean's going to rise in 400 years, an eighth of an inch, and you'll have more seafront property, right, if that happens. I said, is that good or bad? I said, isn't that a good thing? If I have a little property on the ocean, I have a little bit more property. I have a little bit more ocean. But the fact is that uh, 
It's a, it's a tremendous problem. And we are closer to World War III today than we've ever been. And the difference is, and I say this a lot, this isn't army tanks going back and forth and shooting at each other. This is obliteration. The power of these weapons, and I'm the one that revived it, and I hated to do it, but you know, we had stuff that was 48 years old. They didn't even know if it worked. We have incredible stuff, so does Russia. China has much less, but they're gonna catch up over four or five years. It's the single biggest threat by far to civilization. And nobody talks about it. They talk about global warming. Used to be, remember? Used to be global warming. You know, they changed the name, you know why? Because the planet's getting cooler now. So now what they call it is climate change, because that covers everything. See, climate change, if it gets hot, cool, you know, these people, I, I don't know if they're for real, but if they're not, they're covered by the words climate change. If it gets cooler, that's good. If it gets hotter, that's good. Global warming wasn't working so well. But the single biggest threat, okay, now let's assume we have a really smart president and that's not gonna be a threat because we have a lot of power. Doing business with China is a good thing, but you have to have a fair deal. Doing business with Russia, they have so much in terms of of minerals and things, the size of their land mass is like four times bigger than the United States. The minerals and things they have, we can do great business and you keep everybody happy. You can solve that problem. But let's talk about the local problem. The local problem is that you have countries stealing your business. Mexico is a very big one. Mexico, this year we have a deficit with Mexico of $250 billion. Think of this. With Mexico, little Mexico, you think of it as a little innocent place. We're losing our ass to Mexico. China, you don't even have to talk about. We have over a trillion dollars this year. I was charging them numbers that were unbelievable, and now he's just totally given up the ghost. And we're gonna lose a trillion dollars in deficits to China, a trillion, that's not sustainable. We're gonna turn it all around, and we're gonna do it through taxation and tariffs. It will be done in 24 hours, and it'll change the whole planet. Just so you know, Sarah, China became powerful because they charge, they don't call it tariffs, they call it a tax, they call it, they don't call it tariffs. The word tariff is a beautiful word to me, but to a lot of people that don't understand, it's not a beautiful word because you have a lot of people that are paid off by these countries, they're taking care of these countries, and they don't care about destroying the United States. They want millions of dollars in fees and co consultation, but we will, in, literally, in a period of 24 hours, we can change the whole trading of the whole world. They've taken advantage of our country for years. I stopped it, I stopped so much of it, and then we had a focus on COVID which a lot of people said was put in there for a reason. You know, it came out of the Wuhan lab, which I said right from the beginning, all of you know. It didn't come out of a cave, they said a cave. It didn't come from France, they blamed France, they blamed, they blamed, I call it the China virus because I like to be accurate, you know? They call it, they call it the Spanish flu, they call it all different names when something comes from a country, except for China, we have to call it COVID. What the hell does COVID mean? The China virus. And a lot of people think they did that because they were not happy with me as president. I actually had a great relationship with President Xi, and in his own way, he probably liked me the most, but maybe or maybe not. I saw that Putin the other day endorsed Kamala. And you have to understand, these are major chess players. So when he endorses Kamala, he may say, well, I did that because I love you and it's better to be doing it. So who knows, but he endorsed Kamala, which is a little unusual, I was watching, I said, it's interesting. I think that's a good thing, isn't it? It really is, but look, we have to turn it around if we can. We're going to have a reciprocal trade tax. We're gonna have a, so if China charges 152%, which they do in a car, if we sell a car made here into China, which you don't do because the tax is too high, they say to all your companies and to others, and to Elon Musk who gave us, he is a great guy. He gave me the strongest endorsement. And he's a really wonderful guy. But they say to him, we don't want your car unless you build your plant in China. And there's nothing wrong with saying that. That's smart people say that. We haven't said it for many years. I said it. We have a lot of plants going up with Apple and other things. I said, you, you've got to build plants. You don't build plants here, we're going to put the tariffs on your products coming in from China. So we can do it quickly, but we're going to have what's called the Reciprocal Trade Act. 
Now, I dealt with a senator, a very good senator, actually, but he knows nothing about trade. I said, here's what I want to do, Senator. I want to take the reciprocal trade. If they charge us 100%, we charge them 100%. He said, you mean they charge us, we charge them? You got me. How simple could it be? It was sort of cool, because he doesn't care. He's a senator, doesn't care about trade, but you know. So we're going to call it the Trump Reciprocal Trade Act, or I'll leave the name Trump off as long as we do it. So when India, which is a very big abuser, uh, he happens to be coming to meet me next week, and Modi, he's, he's fantastic. I mean, fantastic man. These, a lot of these leaders are fantastic. You have to understand one thing. They're dealing, they're 100%. These people are the sharpest people. They're not a little bit backward. They're not, they are at the top, you know the expression, they're at the top of their game, and they use it against us. But India is very tough, Brazil is very tough. There are certain countries, I can tell you every one, I can give you from top to bottom. China is the toughest of all, but we were taking care of China with the tariffs. So we're gonna do a reciprocal trade. If anybody charges us 10 cents, if they charge us $2, if they charge us 100%, 250%, we charge them the same thing. And you know what's gonna happen? Everything's gonna disappear, and we're gonna end up having free trade again. And if it doesn't, Okay? But you know, the biggest beneficiary, I believe, is going to be your state. And I won't say that to other states, I promise. About your state, you are going to have plants built at a level that you haven't seen in 50 years. Great question. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, one of the other things I think that you did that helped protect the American worker as much as anything else and also make our country and our community safer, which you actually did something about the border. Just this month, there was a woman in my home state of Arkansas who was killed by an illegal immigrant who was drunk driving that was deported during your administration and came back under this administration because they have failed to protect our country. It's one of the great threats that we face that you actually did something about. Tell us what you will do on day one to help okay. protect so our country. So we're gonna be, day one we're doing two things, closing the border and drill the baby drill. compared to what this border is. That border was like a safe border compared. And I did it, I did a great job, and it also includes uh, drugs, came to a, a you know, much lower. Look, unless you have the death penalty for drug dealers, you'll never get rid of the drug problem. Put that through your head. Put that through your head. And I don't know if our country's ready for it. When I was with, uh, when I was with President Xi, and again, I had, until COVID, I had a great relationship. Once that happened, I really didn't want a relationship because $60 trillion, millions of dead people all over the world. I was not exactly thrilled with him. But before that, I had a great relationship. And I said, do you have a drug problem? No, 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 we have no drug problem. Oh, how come? Death penalty, immediate. I said, what does that mean, immediate? Immediate, we have what's called a quick trial. You know what a quick trial is? Like in one day, the trial is over. Over here, it'll be 25 years. They'll get some nice liberal lawyer and they'll have it tied up for 25 years. The guy dies of old age, so, uh, but they have a death penalty. In Singapore, they have a death penalty. In a lot of countries, they have a death penalty. You sell drugs because the average drug dealer kills during his or her life 500 people. The average one, the big ones, much more. But when you hear that, you know, when people start to hear that, 
and I set up blue ribbon committees. I put, you know, nice people, dilettantes from New York and from Los Angeles, people that know nothing about drugs, and they're dealing with very smart people. These dealers are smart as hell, they're tough as hell, and they make a fortune. They make a fortune. And if you don't have the death penalty for drug dealers, you can, you're just wasting your time. Now we can keep it down and we can do better than we're doing now and a lot better than we're doing now because what's happening now is out of control. But we had the lowest human trafficking, mostly in women, I hate to say, mostly in women, but we had the lowest human trafficking in 32 years. You know my favorite chart, the chart I put down. When I look to the right, my, that'll be my all-time favorite chart in history. That was basically a chart showing what a good job I did on immigration. But even if it showed I did a bad job on immigration, it will be my all-time favorite chart because I wouldn't be here right now if I didn't look over it. My all-time favorite chart. Blue, yellow, red. It was that uh, beautiful. Well, there it is. There it is. <laughs> These guys are very good back at it. That's it. You know, the interesting thing, it's always on my left when I did the rallies. It's always on my list. I only do it about 15, maybe 20% of the time, so I don't do it much. And it's always at the end of a speech. But it's always here. For some reason, they dropped it here. It was at the beginning of the speech, the very beginning couple of sentences. And I turned like a deer bolting, I guess, right? They say, good hunter, say, it's every once in a while a deer will bolt prior to the shot. And I don't know, I guess mine was a form of, but I turned around to look at it. It was right here behind me, actually. And my head was at a perfect angle. It, it got me. But if you gotta be hit, that's the best place. It, although it's a, it's a blood. The doctor said, how come so much blood? He said, the ear bleeds more than anything. I said, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> but, but it was, it was an amazing, it was an amazing thing. And, and I, I have to say, because I, I have to, while we're on the subject, because people do like to talk about it, uh, a few days ago we had an incident. I have to say, Secret Service did a hell of a job. They did a job. They one of the gentlemen, that one of the agents was walking a couple of holes in front, and he saw a rifle. AK-47, that's serious stuff, right? You know more about that. My sons know more about this stuff. But AK-47, that's a, that's a bad one. The other one was an AR-15. This was an AK-47. And he saw the barrel of the gun coming out from a bush. Can you believe it? This guy was all set. He was all set to do his number. And there was no talk. He didn't say, hello, what are you doing here, please? <laughs> and he ends up getting shot himself. He took his gun and started shooting him. And this guy ran. And I don't know if he, where is he? Not here, right? This guy, these guys do a great job. Now, they do need more people, and they've been complaining about that for a long time, but he did a great job. But you want to know another sort of a miracle? So the guy is now running for his life, and he's got a car a block away or whatever. And a woman, it's a woman, not a man, a woman, see? Women are smarter than men. How does that sound? Our great first lady is very happy now. Let me just, let me just tell you, think of this. Who would do this? I actually asked, I was with the sheriff this morning, I was with a couple of people from Secret Service. Who would do this? So you now have a man running, not with the gun, he dropped the gun, we found the gun, but he was gone. And a woman, driving in a car, saw a man on the street, pretty busy street, running. And she followed him. And he got into the car, and she stopped because she thought he was trouble. He looked different. He like trouble. She followed him, it wasn't very far, and parked the car behind his car, and started taking pictures of his license plate. <laughs> No, no, Susan, who would do that? It's the women, not for good or bad, not from, you know, strength or heroism, no, just, you see somebody running, I see people running all the time. You know, she saw something in this guy that was bad. 
she may have heard maybe gunshots because there were four, I guess four gunshots. Actually, the, gun, the shots, she never got off a shot. The shots were from Secret Service. But think of it, who would do this? If you took a thousand of these incidents, would even one person have done it? This woman was, I haven't met her, but I'd like to meet her, I'm going to meet her at home. But think of this, she goes in, she takes pictures of the plane, and then she sends the pictures into the sheriff's office, and the sheriffs are saying, wow, this is pretty amazing. And they were able to get this guy within 10 minutes at a high-speed chase on the highway. Otherwise, we'd probably have an AK-47. They had the camera, they had the whole, he had the whole thing. He was a sophisticated guy. He even had the serial number taken off the, the rifle, the gun. But think of this, so we'd have all this stuff. But I'd be walking around saying, I wonder where this guy is. Is he in this audience? We would have a maniac out there. This woman was unbelievable. Because I, I actually asked the sheriff, if it happened a thousand times, would anybody have done that? He said, maybe, but not much, not much. So she did a, a she was really amazing, amazing thing. I think there are a couple takeaways there. One, the women of this country love Donald Trump. certainly is that God is not finished with you and he has been done. Sarah, I just want to say one thing. So when I heard about this tonight, I said, uh, so where am I speaking? Michigan, good, I like Michigan. I want to talk about cars. I love talking about the cars because it's so simple. It's so ridiculous that this is happening. You don't want the electric, you do want electric cars, 7%, 8%. Uh, Elon makes a great product, but you know what? And I have, hey, I've driven, his car is incredible. Other cars are incredible, but you have a, a little thing, but you want to have gasoline propelled cars, you want to have hybrids, you want to have all sorts. They say a new one is going to be hydrogen, who the hell knows? They, has, they say it has a slight problem, it blows up. And if you're in the car, that could be a little problem. But you want to you be able to have whatever it is, whatever the market is and all that stuff. But they said, sir, you're having a town hall tonight. And I said, a town hall? Well, what the hell? They want a rally. They don't want a town hall. Town hall. And, and I said, so who is the host? Because host or hostess. And they said, Sarah Huckabee Sanders. And I said, Sarah, you know, I love these rallies, you know, she you say, we will make America great, everyone's going crazy, we had one the other night, but you know what, can I be honest, this was more fun than a rally today. This was 